So this morning I'm taking on a bit of a walk with me just around the property. You might be interested in seeing a bit of the landscape. And I've got my camera with me in case we see anything interesting and I can take some photos. So let's go. I don't know if you can see but in the center of that screen is the Wedgetail Eagle's Nest that Corey showed you. And you can see sort of how it's positioned in the landscape. It's, it's the top of the tree but down in the valley, down in the creek line. And I am almost level with it here, but I'm a fair way away. So I'm up near the cottage. We've noticed that uh, just in the last few days, there's some eagles that have been coming in and out of the nest. Um, the wedgetail eagles tend to have a large area that they own with multiple nests and they'll rotate through, that, uh, through those nests every few years. So it looks like it's time to come back to this nest. So just want to get bit of a better look I'm just gonna go for a walk and see if there are different vantage points just zoom out oh. olive grove and then you can see rock pole kind of cottage over there you can't really it's a bit, a bit in the dark come across little tracks like this that head off into the grass um, I know that's not us so that will be a kangaroo trail we'll find them all over the property and there'll be certain places nearby where they kind of hang out during the day and during the night and that sort of thing through there you can just see that line going through that is actually a kangaroo track heads off that way into these rocked areas here there's actually like a little cave area in there I can't see any roos around I'm not sure you guys you see the grass is pushed over here so they're coming through here little spot here. love going for like little explores and finding all nooks and crannies. Um, when I lived in like a more urban area I would like find um, like abandoned buildings and go and explore those. Just got this really really strong curiosity and um, it's probably not safe. <laughs> Pretty sure if I was stuck out in the genuine wild, I wouldn't last for very long. Does anybody else just love exploring stuff? Should we go down and climb through there? I can't jump up off this rock because I'm like way not coordinated enough. I'll walk around. All right, let's go. Cool. There weren't any kangaroos in there or on the other side. So that was fun. Let's keep going down on the creek line now not too far from creek region which is over that side let me show you where we've come at the center of the screen you can see some tire tracks so we walked down there that's where those piles of rocks are and we walked through the little opening Coming down into the creek line, creek region is down to your left down there and this is coming up the other side. Okay, middle of the screen we have the eagle's nest. Kind of on the same level as it, a bit closer. Um, might see if I can scoot over to those trees over there and see what we can see.
try not to walk through any spider webs. <sighs> so beautiful through here. get a bit closer because it doesn't look like they're in there for the moment they might be out and about somewhere else uh, I might backtrack and see if I can work my way down this granite outcrop into the creek area and then cross it That wet granite is slippery. I almost totally fell on my arse. See, I'm looking for the kangaroo tracks because they're gonna find like one of the easiest ways down, right? More or less, maybe not always the easiest way for humans. But look through here. It's beautiful with all the, like the moss on the rocks. Oh, so gorgeous. Love oh, this time of year. Yeah. Cool. Down in the creek line now. It's so lovely and green and lush down here. So many little birds all like flitting about. I'm actually not too far under the um, eagle's nest actually. Let me take a photo. I'll, uh, I'll show you around. That's where I came down. Just down through there, I know. Ooh. Oh! I just got swooped by Cookbar. We've got a pretty big day of just doing stuff around the homestead, so might do a bit of a vlog style today um i need to turn my compost corey is trying to cook in an offset smoker for the first time it's not something that we commonly do here in australia but we're inspired by all the american youtubers that we watch um and i need to do a general tidy up uh, because we have guests coming next week which will be a nice little surprise for you guys so I'm in the garden area today just doing a few odd jobs got my hat got my gloves um, still got other errands to do out and about today so just gonna spend a quick little amount of time updating things um, turning my my sorely neglected compost pile and see if I can get that going again I'll probably hand you off to Corey and he can catch you up on what he's doing and um, yeah I'll catch you guys a bit later so we don't do this here and I've never done it before I smoked brisket seen all the videos it looks bloody amazing you guys overseas God, tell ya I'd smash kilos of that so we're going to give it a crack. So we'll just get a knife. We've got some charcoal. Hardwood charcoal. So we're going to start uh, chopping it in the little thing here. And we're 
And if you have any ideas or pointers that make it easy, or ideas, to get a nice brisket in something, this is very, it's, it's only cheap, it's nothing special. Drop a comment. Need some pointers, definitely. So we've got the charcoal in. I also have, I also have just, I just went and split some, uh, some wood. This is some uh, Aussie hardwood, just in little bits as well. So we can chuck a piece in every, I don't know, maybe half an hour, depending on the temperature. What have we got next? Okay, we've got a few little fire lighters here. This is just stuff I went down and got this morning. Geez, they pack it well. Okay. In and under the charcoal. Mainly under. Probably should have done that first. <laughs> but you get that. Okay. Now. So I might actually just wash them. I might wash them. It hasn't been used before. Well, we haven't used it before. Before we uh, put the meat on. Now we get my favourite thing. And we'll light this up. open the chimney. I might just split some of those little splits up into like little like kit we call it kindling just like very narrow little bits just to assist with the charcoal and the fire and uh, oh geez the heat gauge has already moved it's already up to oh it's in in, in F <laughs> it's already up to one 150 F Fahrenheit or 65 roughly Celsius. Okay. I'm just going to leave the wood in here. Yeah, we're cranking up. We're at um, two, 250 F. That's pretty good. I keep saying F. Fahrenheit. So I believe a good temperature from what I've gathered. And please tell me what you guys prefer. Because I really want to get into this smoking stuff I'd love to make like a bigger smoker um, it'd just be awesome especially for like six months of the year while we're here and everything's green in summer we can't have fires because too much fire danger but anyway so I'm going to leave that for now I'm just going to go wash those racks and gather the ingredients for the rub and I will be back to show you what we've done. All right, so fire has been working its way down. Still looks pretty hot to me, so I'm probably just gonna give it a bit longer. I reckon, before I close it up, because we're at, sorry, the, shade, the sun there is not real good. So we're at about 280 Fahrenheit. So I do need some pointers on like the vent. So I've got a vent on the firebox. Obviously the lid will be closed. I have a vent down there and I have a vent on top of the chimney. 
So how do I, is it I open the vent there to let more air in, but then the vent on the chimney, do I keep that closed or semi-closed to slow the flow of the hot air? I've got no idea. But hopefully it'll turn out all right. All right, so what have we got here? Don't mind the workbench. We are in the shed. Brisket, it's a rolled brisk piece of brisket from our butcher. Just a little one. It's not that big. Got some mustard for the binder. And in here, shadow is pretty bad. I have a mixture of, they're all equal parts apart from the salt. The salt is about two thirds worth. So pepper, uh, smoky papri paprika, I'll start that again, pepper, smoked paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, and salt. So I'm going to hit it with the mustard, rub it up, put that on, lather it up good, and then uh, might just put a bit of the glad wrap on it, the cling wrap just for another maybe half an hour just till that fire calms down a bit so let's do it there you go. all right I'm just gonna go wash my hands doesn't look too bad looks all right we'll be back in a sec okay so the fire is uh let's have a look here Oh yeah, no, we're looking pretty good. It's calmed down a lot now. That's great. Being such a thin smoking unit, everything gets hot. <laughs> like handles, everything. So we're sitting at about 270 Fahrenheit. Okay, so our meat's been sitting here for probably 20 minutes, roughly. Uh, the smoke is going good. Temps at about 270 Fahrenheit. So we do have smoke. Now I'm not sure about this like clean smoke, blue smoke, grey smoke, you know, whatever. So I'm a I'm a definitely this is a learning curve for me. So right, I'm just gonna put the camera on the tripod. Click goes camera and not too sure how I'm going to do this so I'm going to put the meat on the rack and I'm going to slide the foil tray um, underneath it to catch any drips because I don't want any there's no like fat tray or anything it's just a steel drum first things first we start with the meat. So we just go meat on. Oops, sunglasses fell down. Tray underneath. Close the lid. Jeez, it drops temperature quick. Went down to 200. 200 Fahrenheit, just under, oh, what's that? Just under 100 Celsius, geez, okay. First climbing back up now, slowly, that's good. I was gonna go wash my hands again. <laughs> again. <laughs> Alrighty, so I've got a bit of wood here. Um, getting warm, that was a recommendation as well. It's actually, yeah, it's actually quite warm. Um, now, I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to keep an eye on the temperature gauge here. And hopefully keep it between around 250 Fahrenheit, which is roughly 110, 120, 120 Celsius maybe. Can't really tell on that gauge. Um, and then once the temperature starts to drop down, I'll chuck another one of these on 
So, that's it. So what else is going on today? Well, I gotta clean the shed out. As you can see, there's crap everywhere. I'll give you a, I'll give you a look. And to hide, lawnmower, ranger, plumbing stuff, tools, just, everything's kind of just being fired in here. So, we've got a big project coming up, so I've got to uh, clear this out. My son and his girlfriend are actually going to travel around Australia. Now, he's got a Nissan Patrol, four-wheel drive, uh, station wagon. Uh, in my opinion, patrols are the best four-wheel drive ever made in the whole wide world. Ever. Hands down. Did I mention? Patrols are the best. So, what have we got to do to it? Whew, whole list of stuff. Uh, we've got to make a custom set of drawers in the back of it to hold um, a slide-out fridge, a cooker, like utensil drawers. Uh, it'd be all made out of 12mm marine ply with drawer slides and I don't know if you're going to put carpet on top of it, like marine carpet, I'm not sure yet. Um, so that's going to be pretty involved and look pretty cool. Uh, we've got to install a water tank in there with a like a 12 volt pump, just kind of similar to just a little 12 volt pump. But we'll bring all the uh, specs and stuff when we come to do it. We've got to build a battery. So he's got these uh, 3 volt lithium cells, which we're going to make a, our own battery unit with BMS and all this stuff. Uh, what else we got to do? Um, Oh, he's got a winch as well. Now he doesn't have a winch bull bar on the car, so we've got to take that off and weld up, probably get some brackets and stuff, laser cut, and make up a winch cradle that attaches to the chassis rather than attaching to the bull bar. Oh, and just odds and ends, bits and pieces. Put a rooftop tent on it, put a great big awning on it, a big 270 degree awning. There's a lot to do. And he's got all the stuff. So he spent a fair bit of coin on getting all this. Um, he will have his own YouTube channel and they're going to document uh, the car build and also their trip around Oz. So he's coming up next week, I think. Not really sure. We're pretty blasé here in, you know, where we live. Next week, week after, whatever. Same thing. So what I'm going to do is just get into tidying some stuff up, might start just moving the mower out, getting rid of some big stuff, um, <laughs> I don't know if you want to watch me tidy up the shed, but I've just put a full battery in the camera, so might put some tunes on and go into a bit of a time lapse thing. Oh, I've got to set the timer for the thing, that's right. So, I want to check the meat in, oh, I can't see, I'm going to check the temperature, probably every, every 20 minutes, I'll check it, because I'm out here anyway, so, alright, I'll be back. What do you want to listen to? Not that we can put music on, but what am I going to listen to, more importantly? Um, we're going to go oh, from 1995. Woohoo! That's old. Uh, some Nine Inch Nails. Album, The Downward Spiral.
I should say, Corio Rockpile Bar and Grill. Um, the brisket is going pretty good, I must say. The temperature, I'm being pretty happy with. Had my timer set for every 20 minutes, it's been working well. So we're going to just pull it out now and put it on uh, baking paper. We don't have any butcher's paper. So but I'm going to check the temp, internal temp, and your guess is as good as mine at how it's going to be. Now I just thought of something. Yeah, it's going to be hot, but we'll be right. We've got tough fingers. Okay, you ready? Okay. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you're wondering what if you wonder if what just happened. <laughs> Amanda's got a compost thermometer here. And she just bloody stabbed me with it. <laughs> We're not checking the meat with a compost <laughs> thermometer, although it goes up to 120 Celsius, so you probably could. Okay, so we're probably going to be bordering on, probably going to be touching 70 Celsius, which is through the magic of push button, we're at about 160 Fahrenheit. Which may be a little bit low, but I'm going to wrap it and put it back in. Probably got another two hours yet, so we'll run with that. One more layer yet. Oh, a little bit slippery. Slippery little sucker. And I'm just going to move this rack down. There. And put the other rack in. Because we're probably going to put the uh, macaroni cheese in here as well. That we've got pre-made to finished reheating all right no pressure so that's uh that's where we're at we'll see how we go and as you can see the uh it's looking a bit tidier in here things are looking all right and i tidied tidied up outside there was all rubbish everywhere oh and i should say please if you like subscribe like well that was two likes and share and if you've got any pointers for me on cooking brisket smash the comments hard so i can know so you know three or four briskets down the track will be good it's time for me to finish up my jobs for the day hey jocks hi hello hey puppies Hi, Ro. Hi. Hey, Paul. Hey, Doza. Oh, hi. Hey, hello, people. Chris, I'm covering it for me. Just so you can see, I did actually move it all to the other side. Hi. There you go. All right, I'm going to put this thermometer in. Push it down. Oh, there we go. Ooh. <laughs> I'll turn it around. Uh, that way we can, I ordered this online. That way I can monitor how hot it gets inside. When I first did the pile, it actually got quite warm. Um, and when I flipped it the first time, but because it's been neglected, it's cooled down. So we shall see how we go. I mean, it's not really registering anything yet. Doesn't have Fahrenheit on it, but 
20 degrees Celsius is not very many Fahrenheit. That's, a, that's about what we are outside, like ambient. There's not, not many Fahrenheits. <laughs> no. How many Fahrenheits in a, in a nearly in a, 20 in a Celsius? In a nearly 20 Celsius. <laughs> Just another beautiful day at Rock Pile here. We've um, done a fair bit. I actually filled up the memory card uh, earlier on in the day and my tech department was shopping. So, uh, certain things um, a man can't do in this house and that is uh, touch the wife's computer. <laughs> touch the computer. Touch any technology and stuff. And touch any <laughs> camera gear or try and plug camera gear into the computer. Yeah, no, it ain't going to happen. So, I just put it on the desk on in our office and that was it. So... Uh, we yeah cleaned up, cleaned up a bit, moved some stuff. Quite happy. Uh, the young fellow should be here next week. Like I said earlier, we've got a bit of a bit of a big project for him uh, to build up. He's got all the stuff, so it's going to be going to be pretty good. Um, we'll film that along the way, and he'll film it too. We'll see how we go. See how many subscribers he gets. <laughs> hey? Oh, he'll probably beat us straight yeah, away. Yeah, he'll, he'll beat us in the first <laughs> week, <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. And so today I went for my walk. I've done a few little chores around here, flipped my compost, um, went and done some shopping, oh, you'd got, done some you got cleaning. Attacked by a kookaburra. <laughs> I got swooped by a Swo kookaburra. Swooped by a kookaburra, yeah. Um, and yeah, and this is us wrapping up our day. Um, might just post the outcome of the brisket once it's rested for a couple of hours Ooh, so um, at the end. and. We'll see how it goes, okay guys? So we'll sign off now for the day and hope you enjoyed spending the day with us. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, bye. See, see you next time. Bye. Okay, so the moment of truth. Had it sitting up here for, well, it was in the esky for a while. Okay, it's been brought inside. I've wrapped it up in a tea towel and some more foil. <laughs> what a grand unveiling. It's like a Christmas present. Are you ready? I'm not sure if I am ready, but... Well, you know, it looks interesting. It's juicy. Yeah, it looks interesting. It's shrunk a bit. I know it's not very big, but it is our first. So, okay, I'm just going to go straight in half. Just for camera purposes only. Okay. Well, there you have it, and I can see juice coming out of it, it looks very juicy. Okay, um, what next? Um, how much did you want? And then of course, we have the mac cheese. Which is ready to eat. We're just gonna cut it up and sit back and eat it and enjoy our dinner. Thanks folks, enjoy your night.